I'll start by a brief account of my argument uh, that you can see here. Uh, art is motivated by the quest of, for beauty. Beauty answers basic human need. The need for beauty is never completely satisfied, and therefore, there is no end to art. <laughs> okay, end of my paper. <laughs> In my presentation today, I will not attempt to formulate uh, the many questions concerning the theory of the end of art, rather I will offer an outline of an alternative understanding of art. While Danto focuses on the historical goal of art, I view art in terms of human needs. Why do we need art? Same question that you raised. The search for an answer on Danto's terms would result in a confusing idea that we need art in order to achieve an understanding of what art is. I will leave you contemplate this possibility. In my view, the idea of art for art's sake or art for the sake of understanding art is misleading. Art is made for our own sake. Unlike nature that was not created in order to satisfy our needs, at least on scientific understanding, our own products of our own creation are certainly made for our own sake. The fact that artists go on producing works of art and society takes interest in their work and enjoys them in different ways indicates that art answers some needs. Moreover, the history of art shows that the need for art, like the need for food, is not satisfied once and for all. We may satisfy our hunger for a few hours, but then the need for, to eat arises again. The same goes for art, only the frequency is different. In this sense, the history of art is more like a television series uh, that may go on and on rather than a classical story that must reach its definite end. The question then is, what is the need that artistic activity seeks to fulfill over and over again? And why aren't we satisfied with great works of the past? My answer takes us back to the 18th century and specifically to Kant, who thought of art in terms of beauty. Indeed, I believe that the search for beauty is the basic motivation for artistic creativity and that the need for art seems, uh, stems from the need for beauty. I have to explain now what beauty is. How is it achieved by art? And why the association between art and beauty does not comply with any theory of the end of art? Judging by the dominant views the last, uh, in the last century, this is not at all obvious. Danto offers two main objections uh, to the idea that beauty is a key concept for understanding art. One, uh, beauty is sensuous. Most artworks go beyond the sensual. And two, uh, many good works of art are not beautiful. My understanding of beauty is different, and it affects both points. One. Uh, beauty is not mere, merely sensual, uh, and we can uh, rely on Kant. I quote from Kant, beauty is valid, is valid only for human beings, i.e. animal, that's the sensual aspect, but also rational beings. That is, beauty is some kind of combination of both. It's never just sensual or just intellectual. Uh, and another quote from uh, Paul Dirac, the famous physicist, uh, who says, it is more important to have beauty in one's equation that to, than to have them fit experience. And this is uh, just an example of a non-sensuous uh, beauty. If equations can be beautiful, abstract or symbolic, or ready-made art can be as well. And two, the argument that many good works of art are not beautiful confuses beauty, the beauty of the subject matter with the beauty of the work itself. That is, the beauty of the materials of the work which the, uh, with the beauty of the final product. Danto is convinced, for instance, that Duchamp's ready-made works are evidently not beautiful. The comb presents a plain functional object yeah, this is famous 
work. Uh, the COM uh, presents a famous uh, a plain functional object that can hardly draw any aesthetic attention. Indeed, the COMB itself is plain, but is Duchamp's work COMB plain too? Now, I'm not uh, going to discuss whether it is a good work of art or not, but let's assume that it is, okay? As an artwork, and definitely as a good work of art, it carries values that its constituting materials do not. Uh, Duchamp's work is certainly not plain, banal, or functional the way the comb is. We accept the comb as an artwork exactly because we relate to it qualities that are not found in its plain subject matter. 